So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy, Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. And it is officially scary hours, man. Listen, listen. Little update on me. No snow yet. No snow yet. <laughs> we got one more day to go, bro. We make it through Sunday. I don't think we're getting no snow. I'll be extra hype. And it'll all be over with, man. You know what I mean? But until then, let's curl up and check out some of these scary videos. This is These Paranormal Stories Will Haunt Your Dreams. So make sure the house is secure, lock the doors, lock the windows, dim the lights. Let's get into it. This is Slapped Ham. Today we're looking at some mysterious historical events that no one can quite explain. So strap yourself in, hit that subscribe button and get ready for more mysterious content. It's like this. And cheers. Imagine digging a well so deep that it breaks into hell. Well, some think what? it has happened before. In 1989, Trinity Broadcasting Network, a radio show, reported on the well to hell for the first time. The well comes from an urban legend in Russia Holy that asserts shit. the drilling of- Holy sh- Do you see how deep that hole is, bro? Yeah, I, I, I get- now, now I get why they call it the well to hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that definitely is reaching down there. ...of a well so deep that it actually went all the way to hell. The legend goes that Mr. Azakov, leading a team of engineers, drilled a hole somewhere in Siberia, going as deep as 14.4 kilometers or around 8.9 miles down. While drilling, they broke into a cavity which piqued their interest. The team lowered a microphone which was heat tolerant and other sensory equipment down into the hole. The equipment showed the temperature to be 1000 degrees Celsius, which is around 1832 Fahrenheit. However, the microphone seemed to pick up something a little more unsettling than high temperature. It sounded like screaming voices coming from the middle of Earth. Here's a sample. And, uh, I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. said that who oh, 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 who oh. who um that's exactly what that sounds like um yeah i don't need to hear that again those are like those oh i hope none of y'all about to go to sleep because y'all gonna <laughs> y'all gonna dream about them screams y'all gonna hear them screams in your dreams that the miners all went insane and started fighting each other when a secondary team arrived to help with the drilling, they discovered the camp in disarray and the first squad of miners were missing. A Finnish newspaper named Amenasastia reported the story for the first time. After that, American tabloids picked up the news and it spread like wildfire. Trinity Broadcasting Network is a Christian network that quickly took up the story and said it was proof of the existence of hell. While he was visiting the US, a Norwegian teacher, Arge Rendellen, said that the story was merely a product of people's gullibility. He later wrote to Trinity. Did it just automatically get hot in here or is it just me? Like, now I'm feeling like hot. A minute ago, I was like, cool. I was, all right, I was good. Now, ever since seeing that and hearing them screams, it's like the temperature is elevated. Trinity Broadcasting giving his point of view. Interestingly, he went back to Norway and read another account of the story, which was supposedly factual. The story said that the well was cursed and quite real. Also, it said a bat-like creature, which could be associated with a demon, flew out of the well and blazed across the sky. Trinity Broadcasting didn't do anything to verify whether it was a hoax or not and ran the story. Later, many versions of the same story were heard around the US. For instance, in 1992, Weekly World News published the same storyline, but with a different location. According to this story, the incident took place in Alaska, where Satan climbed out of the well and killed 13 miners. 
Today, you can find the horrific retelling of the story on many YouTube videos that also have the infamous tormented sounds. However, it was later revealed that the sound effects were taken from different sources, with Barren Blood, a 1972 horror movie, being the most prominent source. Just when these sounds were injected into the urban legend remains a mystery. They, they, they just had to play it again. One more time they had to play it again. And then when I listen again, it sounds like screams, loud yells, like a bunch of people. Like, yeah, yeah, that's that just that sounds bad. Ah. In 1983, the CIA wrote a very bizarre report called the Gateway Report that claimed an altered state of consciousness can be the gateway to astral projection. In 2003, the report was declassified and has since fueled conspiracy theories and readers' imaginations worldwide. Named The Analysis and Assessment of the Gateway Process, the document was 29 pages long. It dove into the CIA's investigation of whether hypnosis and mind control could be helpful in the Cold War. The report is quite dense and wordy, going from complex topics like quantum mechanics and neuroscience to a pseudoscience that has, since its release, been debunked. Some people have called it a mind labyrinth as it goes on to explain scientific underpinnings of some spiritual concepts and space-time transcendence for 24 long pages. It discusses transcendental meditation, hypnosis, biofeedback, universal holograms and spiritual beliefs. According to the report, the universe comprises of interacting energy fields and that the mental states are merely energy variations. The human consciousness follows the same principle, being a vibrational energy pattern. Once an individual achieves a state known as hemi-sync, they can enter an altered state of consciousness. In this state, the vibrations of their consciousness are not limited by physical reality. Thus, they can tune into the energy field purely and freely. Some took this report quite literally and thought it to be the basis of the Laws of Attraction, which states that bad thoughts attract bad outcomes while good thoughts attract good outcomes. Others believe the CIA was investigating the idea of mind warriors that could literally travel through space and time using their mind alone, the applications of which are limitless. As if it wasn't already mysterious enough, the report misses page 25. <laughs> Ever since its declassification, there have been requests to the CIA to release page 25. However, the CIA denies the existence of this page in the first place. Due to this, the page... Of course they do. Hmm. Nah. That don't look suspicious at all. Became the holy grail for conspiracy theorists, curious minds, astral projectors, and pretty much anyone who knew about the report. As interesting and mind-boggling as this report was, the CIA didn't invent the Gateway experience. In fact, the report was based on the teachings of Robert Munro, who's the founder of the Munro Institute. The Institute emailed news outlet Vice after reading the publication's first article on the Gateway Report, saying that they actually had page 25 in their archives. As it turns out, page 25 of the report discusses the Absolute, which is the universe's governing energy. As per the report, this universal hologram is an endlessly flowing spiral that intervenes with reality as we know it. Whether page 25 was left out on purpose or accidentally, no one really knows. We do know that the Munro Institute still exists and apparently has exercises to facilitate astral projection. Human beings have been obsessed with UFOs for as long as they've speculated about their existence. However, your story has to be highly credible for it to become the basis of the X-Files. <laughs> Kelly Kale lived in Victoria, Australia with her husband in 1993. One day, she was in her car with her husband driving through the Dandenong Ranges when they saw a blimp-like object flying through the sky. It had a row of five or six orange lights and made a distinct circular shape. The couple spotted the object a number of times during the night before seeing the object fly off rapidly. What happened next is a complete mystery. Kale felt like her memory went blank, almost like a cut in a movie. 
when she realised they were several hundred metres down the road with no memory of having travelled the distance. When the couple got home, they noticed that they had lost a full hour. On top of that, Kale had a triangular mark close to her belly button that was quite painful. Undergoing hypnotherapy, she had flashbacks over the coming months and later went on national television to narrate her story. Mm. Kale claims that several alien beings appeared in a field. They had no discernible features aside from bulbous red eyes. They seemed to be able to communicate telepathically. Another car just up the road also pulled over to witness the event. They later corroborated the story, giving further details. They claim they were taken aboard a craft and examined by alien beings. They too claim they had a triangular wound on their lower abdomen following the incident. A Melbourne-based paranormal research group, Phenomena Research Australia, was called in to document the case. A 300-page report was written up detailing the bizarre incident, including interviews from multiple witnesses. Sadly, intergroup politics muddied the case and the report was never released to the public. Many UFO enthusiasts believe that the unreleased report is a golden opportunity gone to waste. In the 2016 X... How is it something always miraculous... Mir if I can say that word. Miraculously... There it is. Goes wrong. Files or paperwork go missing. Things get... Why? When it comes to stuff like that. And then nobody has no type of explanation. Nah, that don't look suspicious at all to us. It don't. It don't. <laughs> Files reboot, Fox Mulder himself referenced this historic case. Interestingly, I was just looking at the map of where this allegedly took place and it's only 20 minutes from where I currently live. Maybe one day we'll do a live stream from the exact location where this now infamous alien encounter took place. They probably marked them with that triangle so they can keep track of them some type of way. Having any weird dreams lately? Maybe it's this man paying you a visit in your dreams. What? This man is apparently a man who multiple people have repeatedly seen in their dreams since 2006. Andrea Natella, an Italian marketer, made a website in 2008 called Ever Dream This Man. Any hey, y'all? Anybody? Seen this man in your dreams? Huh? <laughs> Sound like a cop rolling up on you asking you questions. Seen this guy? I'm looking for him. Y'all seen him in your dreams though? For real. I've I've never, but I'm also a person that can't really remember when I, his dreams when he wake up. Like when I'm there and I'm present in the dream, then yeah, everything is. But when I wake up, it's gone. So I couldn't tell you. It took the internet by storm, as many people claim to have seen the man in their dreams. However, despite so many people dreaming about him, no one could find the actual person. This man first surfaced when a woman told her psychiatrist that she kept seeing a man in her dreams. The psychiatrist sketched... I think she's actually seeing somebody in real life, but it's like also in her dreams, or maybe she's sleeping, that person's in the room with her and she don't know it, and it's reflecting in her dreams. I, I don't know, it sounds like some, something or some type of sports or spirit is just trying to tell you something about this guy you're seeing in your dreams. The man... Later, one of his male patients saw the drawing and claimed he too had seen the man while dreaming. Interestingly, none of them had actually ever seen the man in real life. Upon this interesting revelation, the psychiatrist sent the drawing to his colleagues who had patients with repeated dreams. Patients of four of the psychiatrist's colleagues recognised the man as the person they kept seeing in their dreams. When the story went viral in 2009, over 2,000 people from all over the world claimed to have seen the man in their dreams. People from New Delhi, Paris, Dubai, Manila, Stockholm, Amman, Rome, Berlin and many other cities identified this man from their dreams. The dreams were spread over an interestingly expansive spectrum. While some people experienced romantic and even sexual closeness to the man, others were in deadly situations with him. In an interview with news outlet Vice, Andrea Natella said that he dreamt about this man for the first time in 2008. It was on this man's instructions that he made a website to identify him. However, no human looking like this man has ever been found. 
Nutella's website, thisman.org, presents the following theories to explain this occurrence. Carl Jung, a psychoanalyst and psychiatrist, provided the concept of an archetypal image of the unconscious mind that people see in difficult times of their lives. This man could be an example of an archetype. Another theory was that the man could be a godly manifestation. Perhaps some corporation was conditioning people mentally to dream about the same person. Some people only had dreams of this man after they had seen his picture online or heard about him from others. Mm -hmm. It's difficult for people to remember the faces of those they dream about, so people may have been inaccurately describing the man in their dreams as Natalas this man. However, just as the story hit fever pitch, it was discovered that thisman.org was linked to a website called guerrillamarketing.it, a fake marketing wow. agency known to pull large-scale hoaxes. And while this man was outed as a publicity stunt, it was never explicitly linked to a product or service, which chalked it up as a sort of marketing experiment. In 2010, a production company purchased the rights to the This Man IP, and plans for a feature-length movie were announced. However, there's been no announcement since. I don't know, I think I would kind of remember that face if I saw it in my dreams. Which I, what about y'all? I don't remember in that. He looked too sick, too, like, killerish, too, like, yeah, yeah. Like, serial killer style. Like, yeah, yeah. You ain't gonna forget his face. It's... No. Before we take a look at the legend of the melon heads, remember to hit that subscribe button, then tickle that little bell icon there and turn on all channel notifications. That way you'll be in the loop every time we drop our mysterious and scary videos. From American folklore, the story of the Melon Heads is known all over Connecticut, Michigan, and Ohio. According to urban legend, Melon Heads are tiny humans with giant, bulbous, melon like heads that roam around the states attacking people, especially around Halloween. In Michigan, the Melon Heads are said to live near Felt Mansion and have also been seen in the wilderness surrounding Ottawa County. Different sources attribute the origin of Melon Heads to various reasons and entities. One story narrates that melon heads were actually kids suffering from hydrocephalus, a condition in which cerebrospinal fluids fill the brain, putting pressure on the skull. Initially, according to the legends, these children were kept in the Junction Insane Asylum, which is in close proximity to the Felt Mansion. During their stay at the asylum, the children were physically and emotionally abused, leading them to become feral. It's said that they fled to the forests around the asylum and are said to still reside there. However, the Elegan County Historical Society denies the presence of any asylum in that area ever, although the land was once a prison. Another story says that these children lived in the Felt Mansion and plotted to kill the doctor responsible for abusing them. Local teenagers still hang out near Felt Mansion and have reported seeing the melon heads, calling them wobbleheads. Visitors to the area have also reported seeing curtains move in empty old buildings and strange noises coming from the rooms, such as footsteps and heavy breathing. In Ohio, melon heads are said to live in Kirtland. The local law narrates that a mysterious doctor named Dr. Crow or Dr. Melonhead used to perform unusual experiments on children. As a result, the children develop malformed bodies and abnormally large heads. Upon suffering this abuse, the melon heads killed the doctor and burned the orphanage down. There's even a 2010 horror movie called The Legend of Melon Heads based in the Kirtland suburbs. Meanwhile, melon heads seem to be as far spread out as Connecticut, cited in New Haven County, Fairfield County, Weston, Easton, Stratford, Monroe and Shelton. It's interesting that the myth is so pervasive and has spread around the United States linked by uncanny details. First time I've ever heard of that. Link, they said it's linked around the United States. That's the first time I've ever heard anything about a melon head or a movie that, that was based upon the myth of melon head. Like, never heard of nothing like this, fam. As with most urban legends, it's difficult to point to one exact incident as the nucleus of the tale. So is there a strand of truth that runs through these tales to spark the legend in the first place? 
could the melon heads really be out there lurking in the woods? Now, if you want to see. The heck, bro? They always doing something, man, and something going horribly wrong. And then, yeah, chaos. <laughs> chaos. All right, listen, before y'all go to sleep tonight, take a look back at that picture of that dude, man. Let me see if I can pull him up real quick. That's what I want y'all to see before you go, before you roll out. Not the melon heads, though. Where are you at? Almost there. Oh, here we go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I want y'all to see a picture of that before y'all go to bed tonight. And then y'all let me know if you see him in your dreams. All right? If you do, tell them else say what's up, but leave me alone. <laughs> All right? It's your boy, man. Y'all stick around and stay tuned, man. Till the next one, I'm gone. Peace.